everyone, it's Jack and Sam from Caldaholic.com and boy do we have big news for you because we're doing a live stream for New Japan's Royal Quest on Saturday, this Saturday at half 5 p.m. UK time. Don't know why I went for all of that in one breath. Saturday. I Saturday. The show has eight big matches including some very, very big title matches and it just seemed like at first everyone was like, is this UK show going to be a bit house showy? And I think from the lineup it pretty much has been disproven. I think it looks pretty good to be honest. Yeah, I still think we're going to see some house showy outcomes though. If you watch mine, yeah, maybe that's a very yeah. good point. If you watch mine and Sam's New Japan reactions and live streams and stuff, you'll be aware that our favourite guy isn't actually on the card. That's Pickles. He's not on the card. I know. How are we going to get through a live stream without Pickles? I don't know. We can't get a pickle spike going. I feel like he always raises our, <laughs> raises our spirits. Hopefully, he's there in spirit rather than physically. But either way, New Japan saw it out. Get Pickles back in. The first match is a six-man tag team match pitting the team of Raisuki Taguchi, Ren Narita, and Shota, or Shooter Umino, yes. the, uh, John Moxley's lad, against the team of Rapongi 3K, that's Shoyo, and Rocky Romero. The theme tune's going to be accurate. <laughs> Shoyo and Rocky were about to go Rapongi 3K. I can't remember. Show and Yo are here to save the day. You're right, yeah. yeah. Rapongi 3K. Who have you got? That's what, I've got Rapongi 3K, 3K, 3K. Because... Yeah, they're, they're not going to lose to to a couple of young boys. No, to Gucci. no, I can't not see happening. It. I, well, now that you've mentioned that, apparently I was listening to the Observer just the, uh, just a few hours ago, yeah. and Melter was blown away by how over Umino is in America. Though this was during the Super J yeah. Cup, but um, I still think I'm also going to go for a Pongi 3K, 3K, 3K. <laughs> just some feel good lads coming out there to fire up the crowd, get a big win. I don't think they'll pin. Umino, I think they might keep him a little bit protected. Yeah, I think, you know? I think Umino will be protected uh, because, yeah, just that little bit of shine from Moxley has mm. given him the world. Still doesn't really have his own gimmick. Still rocking the black trunks. And, yes. You know, that sort of stuff. But if you look at it from like a base level thing, like, you know, you're comparing entrances here, it's either, you know, the full on mental Rapongi 3K entrance, probably with fire extinguisher yeah. Ghostbuster stuff going on, against. Run into the ring. Yeah. Yeah. And then Taguchi will make up for it with his rugby ball, probably. Yeah. Throwing a few dummies here and there. But no, it's probably going to be Rapongi 3K, and I'm going to predict that as well. Next up, we have Yujiro Takahashi and Hikuleo against the team of Juicy Bushi. Juicy Bushi. Ju juice, juice, juice Bushi. A Juicy. Yes. A Bushi and Juice Robinson. Mm. Who have you got and why? For me, this one is the easiest one to pick of the whole card, I think. I'm pretty certain that despite Hikuleo being very large and Yujiro being just such a pimp. I think that um, <laughs> I think the Juice and Ibushi, are, Team Jibushi are going to win because they've both got a lot of momentum. Juice has just picked up a victory over John Moxley on the final regular day of the G1, yeah. and then Kota obviously won the G1. So I can't see either of those guys suffering a pinfall at this stage, especially not against. I think it's fair to say two of Bullet Club's less heralded members right now. So I'm going to go for Team. We need a proper name. For, leave your suggestions. Yeah, leave them below in the comments below. Who have you got and why? I've went for Team Juicy Bush Juicy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, again, for pretty much just echoing your sentiments. I don't think that when these guys are on such a tear, they're going to bring them down unless it's via really nefarious means. Mm. But if it was going to be via really nefarious means, it wouldn't be Takahashi and Hikuleo dishing it out. It'd be somebody else. Yeah. I think somebody more important in Bullet yeah. Club to set something up down the line. Uh, not that they're not important. No, no. But you know, you know what I mean. Mm. Um, Trying to think if there's anything else in it. Mainly, it's pretty straightforward, isn't yeah, it? It's, it's pretty it's easy one really, to predict. Really We're going to look so stupid if it's if it's wrong, but <laughs> I'm pretty certain that it's going to be the big baby face lads picking up a big baby face bloody victory. Yeah. Next up, bit of an interesting one here because I've seen some people suggest that this is for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championship, but. Officially at the moment, at the time of recording, on the running order on New Japan's website, it's not actually listed for any title, but we do have mm. the current champions, uh, Bullet Club members El Fantasmo and Taiji Ishimori taking on Will Ospreay and former Bullet Club member, now Chaos member, Robbie Eagles. Who have you got and why have you got them? I've gone for the Birds of Prey. The Birds of Prey. <laughs> nice. For Osprey yeah. and Eagles. That's uh, very good. I, I just think it's like an easy, straightforward victory. I don't think it's for the belts. Okay. So I think it's just going to be, you know, big hometown win for Osprey. Mm. Eagles get so, you know, big, big feel good moment again because it's just a big house show. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, all I can picture right now is the always sunny, the birds of war coming down. <laughs> and if they don't make that entrance, I'm going to be sorely disappointed. 
I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go the other way, you know. Because mm -hmm. I think there's still some unfinished business between Osprey and El Fantasmo from Best of the Super Juniors. Yeah. Uh, and I think they may be building El Fan LP, I nearly called him like the cool indie ELP. ELP. I think Emerson, might, Lake and Park. Yes. I think they might be building him up as the next challenger for the Junior Heavyweight Championship. Maybe the person to take it from Osprey so he can finally fully step into the heavyweight division. Yeah. I'm not actually certain about that, but um, I'm gonna take a risk even though it's in England, and go for Phantasmo and Ishimori. But it's not what I'm confident on, to be honest. See, the only other thing that was making me sort of sway toward your side of thinking is the ELP Eagles stuff that's going on. Mm. So I could see him getting a sneaky victory over Eagles, and it being one of those moments where it's like, you did your best, hometown crowd sort of like, yeah, maybe. Well, you know, it can further that storyline a little bit. Because they're going to want some storyline furtherment out of, yes, oh, definitely. out of this card. So, yeah. yeah. I reckon, Lou, looking at your side of things, it's Will Ospreay and it's England. You know, it's kind of a, yeah, a but, big deal. But maybe they'll just be like, nope, no winning in your hometown. You never know, the old Vince McMahon. You never know. <laughs> you never know. Next up, we have Naito and Sonata against Jay White and Chase Owens. Who have you got? And why? Well, this was another tricky one because they seem to be building towards Naito versus Jay White for the IC Championship, yep. which is a really hard match to call in itself because Jay White reached the finals of the G1, he's on a bit of a roll, and mm. Naito is Naito. He's always really popular and one of the top guys on the card. Um, typically, in, in New Japan's booking, you'd give the win to the team that doesn't have the champion on it to further that and set yeah. up a conflict down the line. But I think this is where the house showy element comes in for me. I'm going to go for Naito and Sonata purely just because they're so popular LIJ worldwide, and especially in Japan, but just worldwide, that I think it's just a nice big babyface victory. And also, it feeds off my previous prediction of the Bullet Club getting that, you know, potentially energy sapping heel win. Yeah. So if that's followed up with a big nice LIJ victory, then maybe that's what they'll do. Also, I just think you can never tell because of the way these tag matches are set up, but I'm just looking at the four guys in it, and the most likely guy to take a pinfall is obviously Chase Owens. I can't mm. see Naito or Sonata taking one here, especially because Sonata beat, beat Okada in the G1, you know, yeah. maybe they're trying to push him. But again, it's not, it's a really difficult one, especially with that title match on the horizon. So I'm not certain. Who have you got and why? I'm gonna see your prediction, oh. and I'm gonna turn it on its head, and I'm gonna go one better. I think, and this isn't part of my official prediction, okay. obviously the result is, but what happens isn't. I think that the team that's going to win is Jay White and Chase Owens. Okay. But I think Jay White's going to pin Naito. Oh. To then further that yeah. to just a fast track to that match. Yeah. That's a, that's a, sometimes they do that as well. Yeah. It's hard to tell. And I think that's the nice thing about New Japan's booking is that often it's quite conservative, yeah. more so than maybe we're used to in Western wrestling. But then when you get those but, moments, yeah. Yeah, it's just, it hits it's you It's even more nowhere. impactful, yeah. yeah so, and then mm. as well, because Jay White's so good on the mic, and he's so good in all the press conferences, mm. and he's just so good at being that contemptible little bastard. Uh, just think of the work he's going to be able to do with that. Yeah. If he I mean, pins Knight, though. Again, listening to that Observer uh, show recently, uh, Jay White apparently tried to cut a promo on one of the American shows and got the Zach Gibson treatment. Like, he raised the mic to talk, and everyone was just booing. Oh. And he could, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that should be an exciting one but it's a harder one to call as well. I've gone for LIJ, and you've gone for the Dirty Bullet Club. 4442 life, yes. sweet. Next up, the IWGP heavyweight tag title match between, well, not all of the teams have yet been decided. So we've got in one corner the champions, G.O.D., our boy, Tama Tonga, and obviously Tangalo as well. Uh, and on the other side of things, the winner of the Rev Pro tournament to decide the number one contenders. So there's two teams left. There's a yep. final match coming up. Uh, it's between Aussie Open, Mark Davis and Carl Fletcher, one of the best tag teams in the UK, I think it's fair yep. to say, and the team of Shaw Samuels and Josh Bodum. Now, I think out of those two, it's, it's weighted heavily, I'd, I'd argue, towards Aussie Open. I think they're the more established and more popular team, but you never, never know. So I think what we'll do is we'll just go for either G.O.D. or the other the team, the challenges. Mark, yeah. yes. So I've got the title graphic, which you'll have just seen. Mm. It is just G.O.D. and question mark. Okay, so, yeah. and who have you gone for out of those two? So I, as much as, because the one thing I can see is that maybe Aussie Open start getting New Japan time. Mm. Um, because they're obviously doing a lot in and around Australia whenever they're on tour and stuff. Yeah. I think it'd be great for that sort of, you know, home team to have. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's got to be G.O.D. Especially in a situation where the competitors aren't announced. I just can't see there being such a dramatic title change on a New Japan show. Mm. Unless it was like a really established team coming in, mm. like uh, somebody who'd been with the company before or yeah. something like that. I just, yeah, I think it's gonna be G.O.D. I have to agree with you and go for G.O.D. as well, but if they went for it and just gave the belt straight to Aussie Open oh. on 
Like, the f oh, well, I don't know if it's their New Japan debut per se, but if they just gave it to them on this on this show yeah. out of nowhere, I'd love that. But I think it's probably going to stay with G.O.D. for now. And it might be used, though. I think if G.O.D. do win, it'll be via cheating. Yeah. And it'll seem like Aussie Open deserved it. And it'll be used as an excuse to get them in, in more for more future bookings. And I can easily see them becoming a member of the New Japan Tag Team division. They're just yeah. a really good tag team. Yeah, they just work together so well. But it could be Shaw Samuels and Josh Bodum if we just neglected yeah, to mention really, it. Really. If it's I them, would love if it was, I would love if it was them. But just to see Shaw Samuels yeah. come out <laughs> and just terrify all the young boys by screaming East at them. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we've both gone for G.O.D., the more established team. And I think it's, it's a boring pick. And I'm sorry for that, but it's a safe one at the same yeah, time. Yeah, it's a safe pick. Mm. Next, we have a matchup for the never open weight title that pits my boy Tomohiro Ishii against everybody else's boy, but they also hate him loads because he's a complete look. What did he do to Shibata? Kenta. What dick? Who have you got and why? Kenta. <laughs> um, I've gone for the <laughs> dick, Kenta. Because uh, I think this is like one of the hottest angles in wrestling at the minute. Kenta yeah. joining the Bullet Club. Oh, God, and yeah. And the potential tease, although, you know, it's a very cautious one. He's of Shibata. He's desperate to get clear. He is desperate to get cleared. There's no real word on how realistic that is. But um, Kenta joining the Bullet Club, Shibata being furious at him, and Kenta now challenging Ishii for the Never Openweight Championship. I am going for Kenta because of the magnitude of the feud and the, the magnitude of the push they're giving Kenta because of this. I think the smartest thing to do is to just do an immediate title switch, but do you agree? So as everybody knows that watches our New Japan reactions or predictions, Tomohiro Ishii is my boy. And that's why I'm going for Kenta. I was going to say, you're not actually, you're right, 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 right. Uh, I think I, I agree with you in mm. pretty much every respect. And, and yeah, it makes sense to give him a belt like the Never title because it leads to some interesting matchups. Oh, he can wrestle anyone. Can, he can run through the majority of the main unit yeah. if he wanted to, which would be quite nice because like, yes, go off on chaos, but go off on everybody else yeah. as well. Uh, and also just Frees up Tomohiro Ishii to go win the big one at Wrestle Kingdom, I'd doesn't it? I love if Tomohiro Ishii won the big one, <laughs> but uh, just somehow gets that contract at some just, point. Yeah, oh. uh, he deserves it. He actually he deserves does. it. Thing, Abushi deserves He's it. He's got as well, this though. far with no neck. <laughs> Um, so, yes, we've both gone for Kenda. I'm looking forward to this match maybe more than any other on the card. I think yeah. it's going to be wicked. Hopefully, it's a really good match. They're going to they're gonna kick and hit each other really lots. It, this, it, yeah, it's, it's unstoppable force meets a movable object. Yes. I don't know what's going to happen. Very exciting. Next up, the Rev Pro British Heavyweight Championship between the reigning defending champion Zack Sabre Jr. And a guy he's clashed with quite a lot over the past few years, and it's been pretty even, so it doesn't help us whatsoever. Hiroshi, my favourite wrestler, Hiroshi Tanahashi, the air guitar dickhead, always cost me predictions contest. <laughs> Sam, who have you gone for and why? It's London, Zack Sabre Jr., mm. Mr. Socialism himself. Now, I've now I've done a lot of research for this pick, and I, I, I was like looking at their past results against each other, which yeah. didn't help at all because they've taken it's and given 50, it. 50-50, yeah. yeah. So then I went on the history of the Rev Pro British Heavyweight Championship, right. and I was looking at when guys like Shibata and Ishii held the belt in Suzuki, how often did they come over and defend it? Mm. And they did a, like, a, fair a amount, couple of like, yeah. compa Considering that they're millions of miles yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. But I just couldn't see Tanahashi doing that. So at the end of the day, and I thought as well, like, Zack's gonna get a hero's reception, you'd imagine, unless everyone's in super, like, let's get involved with the boo in the heel mode. Yeah. But I don't know if they would. It's Zack Sabre Jr. Um, and I just think, as well, it would be such a shocker for Tanahashi to win, especially if we think that Kenta's just gonna win the belt in the match before. Yeah. I don't think they go for two massive title switches, one after another. So, because of all those reasons, and because I just can't see Tanahashi trying to get through Heathrow all the time, or Stansted or wherever, I'm going to go for Zack Sabre Jr. as well, but oh, it's a close one. Yeah. Mm. And finally, we have the main event of the night for the IWGP heavyweight title, pitting the current champion, Kazuchika Okada, against the challenger in the shape of Minoru. Mm. We'll murder you when you sleep with his bare hands, Suzuki. Who have you got and why? <laughs> Just imagine in the Japanese ring announcer doing that. <laughs> um, I am going for Okada. I think that uh, the way that he's been booked over the past few years means that Whoever does eventually beat him at Wrestle Kingdom, or whoever does eventually win the belt at Wrestle Kingdom, has to beat Okada. And to beat Okada, you've got to have Okada going in as champion. Yeah. So I'm going for Okada, not for the most inspiring of reasons. But I will predict as well that, because I remember the last Okada-Suzuki feud, which I think was like a year or two ago now, and people were split on it. Some people were like, that match was brilliant, it was grueling, it was old school. And a lot of people went, 
he just kind of worked the leg a lot and, and Okada sold loads and then pulls out the win at the end. So I think for this match, they're going to change it up and just go a little bit stiffer and a little bit more mm. fast paced. I hope so anyway, because I wasn't the biggest fan of their last feud either. So I hope this one's really intense, but I do think Okada's going to pick up the win. What about you? Uh, I think this match is going to be an absolute slog. I think it's going <laughs> to be a battle. I think it's going to be a war. It's mm. going to just be disgracefully brutal. Hopefully. but. I can't see that belt changing hands overseas. I just can't see it. Mm. Like, and in front of such a relatively small audience to what they could draw at like a larger scale event for such a momentous thing to happen. Mm. Uh, and as you said, the way they've been building Okada, and it does feel like whoever wins at Wrestle Kingdom has to take it off his hands. Yeah, it, yeah it's got to be Okada that wins, but mm. Suzuki's going to very, very nearly get it. Mm. I think it's going to be really close. They're going to do some like convincing. Come back out or something. Oh, trying to fear. yes, because yeah. Suzuki gun. Yes. Well, those are our predictions for New Japan Pro Wrestling's Royal Quest. Join us, as I mentioned, uh, for our live stream on Saturday at 5:30 p.m. UK time. Um, can't think of anything else. It's going to be good. It's going to be really fun. It's going to be good. Thanks very much for watching, and let us know what you think in the comments section down below. You can follow Cultaholic on Twitter at Cultaholic and on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash cultaholic. If you enjoy what we do, then please do check out our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash cultaholic, where you can pledge. And don't forget, of course, most importantly of all, to hit subscribe and to join us.